Hey guys, Bombbuster72 here again. Today I want to talk to you about the improved Battle Site Zero, or what I like to call the best mod that you can do for your AR-15. Now this really, this only works on AR-15s with the A2 sights. Um, the newer ones with the backup iron sights, you don't really even have to worry about this. It's already got settings that really take care of what we're going to do here. So if you have a firearm, an AR-15, and it has M16A2 sights on it, this is the mod for you. Now the improved Battle Sight Zero, it's, it's been around for a little while now, and if you've ever tried to look up and figure out how to do this, it's very complicated. It's like brain surgery, trying to figure out how to do this. So hopefully I'll be able to explain it. I've got a bunch of 3D models that I'm hoping will really help in explaining how to set this up. But first off, let's talk about why we would want to do this and what Improved Battle Sight Zero is doing for our AR-15. Now, I hope you understand that I'm not trying to talk down to anyone. I don't know what you know about this and what you know about firearms in general, so please bear with me, and we'll get to how to do it here in a second. So to understand exactly what's going on, we need to understand what line of sight is. And the line of sight that we're talking about is from our eye to the target, a straight line to the target. As we're looking through the sights, what we're talking about is our point of aim, point of impact. This is where the bullet impacts where we're aiming. So if we have crosshairs, if we're looking at the, our target, our sights, it is exactly where it's going to hit. This actually only happens at two distances as we're firing a bullet, as it arcs through our line of sight, and then as it drops back down through that line of sight. Anything other than these distances and our bullet will impact either high or lower than our point of aim. With standard zeroing methods, our point of aim and point of impact is at 25 meters and then again at 300 meters. Targets in between 25 and 300 meters will be hit higher than we're actually aiming. And this could be up to 10 inches higher. Anything closer than 25 meters and we're going to get hit lower than our point of aim. Now this shouldn't be any more than 2.5 inches because you know that's about what the distance is between our sights and the muzzle. With improved battle sight zero, what we're doing is we're taking our point of aim, point of impact, and we're shifting it up in the arc of the bullet. So we're going to move our point of aim, point of impact to 50 meters and 200 meters. Now this is all approximately, what we really want to do is we want to sight it in at 200 meters, and this will be approximate for 50. This setting gives us one place, one setting that we can use for any target that is 200 meters and closer. Now this isn't going to be bullseye accurate and if you're looking for a target weapon this is not the sighting system you want to use. Targets between 50 and 200 meters you're still going to hit them high but this is a lot better. We're talking about approximately an inch and a half maybe two inches that you're going to hit high. Very acceptable in a combat situation. Targets that are closer than 50 meters are going to be still again slightly lower than our point of aim Again, this shouldn't be any more than two and a half inches though because the muzzle and the sights are still the same distance apart. The great thing about the improved battle sight zero, we still have a setting that we can adjust to for 300 meters, for 5 and 600 meters. Those settings will stay the same and we can still dial it in for those distances. We need to take our elevation, our range elevation knob on the rear of our A2 sights and we need to, and we need to back it off counterclockwise all the way to the 6 slash 3 setting. Now this 6 slash 3 is 600 meters and 300 meter distances. Once we've done that we need to make sure we flip the small aperture up. This exposes the set screw hole in the top of the sight. Now we take a 1 16th inch Allen key or hex key. It should be 1 16th inch. If yours is not you'll have to figure out which it is and you put it in there and you need to back that set screw out approximately three turns. What you're trying to do is you're trying to free up the bottom half of this wheel. It's actually in two sections and what we want to do is we want to unlock the bottom half from the top half. Once we do that we're going to turn the bottom half four clicks clockwise while making sure the top half stays still. After we've done that we're going to take our allen key again and we're going to tighten that set screw back up locking those two halves back together. All of this was to allow us to adjust our, our lowest setting a little bit further. So now adjust your elevation and range knob on the back sight four clicks past where you had it before and you will see that you now have a, a 200 meter setting. Now all you need to do is take your firearm to the range and sight it in. You could do it at 50 meters but really you're going to want to do this at 200 for the best accuracy. 
Additionally, I like to flip the large aperture up for any distances closer than 200 meters. It gives you a lot more situational awareness. For distances that are further out there, use the smaller one. It helps kind of focus in on those further targets. For any distances further than 200 meters, you can still dial in using the 3, 4, 5, and 600 meter settings on the elevation and range knob. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe. If you have any comments, please leave them below. And until next time, take care and be safe.